Okay, this is my oral report speech. Um, I believe that everybody in their own right is an artist and everybody has the ability to be an artist. Some people are just more superior composers than other people. So today I'm going to teach you how to go from macaroni necklace kid to acrylic paint painting kid. Um, the reasons you might want to learn how to paint is um, if you're in an art class, like if you're a digital design major and you've never picked up a paintbrush, um, maybe you just want to start painting, pick up a new skill, and uh, also because Painting is a good skill to have, it's a good hobby, it's very therapeutic and calming, and it's a good way to de-stress. Um, I've been painting since forever. My first words were cadmium yellow, my first love was Bob Ross. Um, so I've gone through the ringer of making all my mistakes, and you know, painting over wet paint, mixing acrylic paint and oil paint. I've done all of the wrong things, and I've learned from those. Um, so. The first thing you want to do with your canvas is you want to put some gesso on it. And gesso is just a primer. Um, so, gesso, what is it? Artist Network staff state that gesso protects the fibers, provides a knife surface to work on, and gives the canvas flexibility so it doesn't crack. Um, this just ensures that your canvas lasts longer. So you're going to want to dip your flat square brush into the gesso and you want to go in horizontal and vertical movements just saturating every fiber of the canvas. Um, gesso also ensures that the acrylic paint that you use won't soak into the fibers of the canvas. Um, so it just gives a really nice surface to paint on. After that, you're going to let the gesso dry and then you're going to um, take a pencil and you're going to uh, outline make a small map of just what your uh, background is. So I have some mountains here. I have a bear that I planned out in a tree. And then you're gonna wanna establish a light source, which mine is a sun over here through these mountains. Um, and then you want to take your palette and start mixing these colors with it. And right now I'm actually in Georgia, so I don't have any of my paints with me. I just have this. Um, but if I did, I would mix viridian green for this tree. I would mix some browns and whites for these mountains and maybe some blue for the sky. And then uh, after I painted it and I let that first layer of the background dry, I would then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna let it dry. But then also when you're painting the background, you're gonna wanna use uh, flat square brushes, um, larger brushes. Uh, not so much detail brushes or rigger brushes, so you're just going to want to use these larger brushes to, carry, to cover more surface area. Um, and the reason we want to start in the background, according to Marion Bobby Evans in her article, Painting Tips and Techniques, is because painting the background ensures you won't struggle to figure out what to paint in the background and also um, make sure you don't accidentally uh, cover up a bit of of your subject. So in this painting that I have here, I've painted the background first and I mapped out the subject, which is this astronaut. And um, even if I did paint over it a little bit, at least it isn't a completely finished product. But, um, but now this ensures that it won't look messy on the edges and it will flow into the whole painting. Um, so you let the background completely dry before you want to start on your subject. And when you start on your subject, you're going to want to use smaller brushes like rigger brushes and detail brushes because you'll be working with um, smaller areas. So with the subject on this one, it's this um, Egyptian dude. And I went in with uh, detail brushes like this to get into those, those little lines, his earring, um, and just a few other details. And... Um, yeah, that's why you're going to want to use smaller brushes instead of like rounded blending brushes or whatever that you would use for the background. Um, so once you let the foreground dry, uh, you're going to then focus on the mistakes. So in this painting, I would focus on that dark shadow right there. I don't like that. Um, I would also focus on the breast here and I would just um, paint it with a lighter shade or go in and just fix a few things. And then you're going to want to varnish it. Um, with varnish, you want to be in a ventilated area or outside, and you want to take the varnish and just completely cover it. Um, but like I said, be outside. You don't want to be huffing paint, especially if you have asthma, but like that. Um, and the varnish just seals in the canvas and make sure, make sure ensures that the paint isn't going to, um, you know, get ruined over time and uh, protects the painting from dust and whatnot. 
Um, so yeah, in conclusion, painting is a great hobby to pick up. It's therapeutic. It's cool. It's a flex. You know, you can tell your friends, oh yeah, I'm a painter. And um, yeah, everybody, everybody has it in them to do it. So.